All right, welcome back, everybody. So we're going to jump into sort of part two of what I talked about last week. So the last time we were together, what we worked on was building out the flow that was collecting data from our customer voice um, the submission. So the person would go on, fill in the web form. That data would then pass itself into our Dataverse environment. So we got that working up to the, the point where the parent would fill in their information and it would create a contact. I'm going to take that one step further, and we're now going to extend that to then create a child record, which will then come into Dataverse and assign itself as a child of the parent contact. So pretty cool stuff. I'm going to share my screen here, and we will dive right in. All right, so what you have on screen now is our uh, flow that we were working on last week in Power Automate. And so we got it so far last week, we got it down to the create caregiver record. And so what I've done is I've gone in and extended that and I wanna walk you through what we've done. In many ways, it's actually much the same. So we ended with the create caregiver. The next thing we wanna do is initialize a, a set of variables for the child data that's coming in. And you may remember our form, which is right here. We're gonna fill this in as an example in a sec it actually has the ability to capture up to four children. I've only built in one for now, but I'm gonna walk you through how we would tell the system to either stop after one or continue on and do another one, another one, another one. Uh, and it would do the same practice. It would just do it multiple times. So we get to the create caregiver, which is the end of the last video. We initialize three more variables for the child first name, last name, and the date of birth. And then we insert and apply to each. And so we're doing the exact same thing. We're going to grab the question. And if you remember from last week, we grabbed the question and then we created a set of check conditions. So it was check if youth one first name has the information in it. If it does, then go ahead and uh, set that variable. If it doesn't, then skip it. And so that's exactly what we have here. So we've got the get record, which is getting the responses. So that was, if you remember from last week, it was, bear with me, it was the uh list sorry list records from the survey question responses and so we're grabbing those responses and we're looking for the question text and when we set the question text here we're saying when the question te text is equal to youth one first name so that's the name of that field if it is in fact the case then uh, it sets that variable that we created up top so if this is yes go ahead and set the variable to the response from that question if it's no, it'll skip over that and go down to the next one. We've got last name and date of birth. And so once that's all done, what we've got after that is to go and get the primary caregiver record that we created earlier. So again, I'm just gonna minimize this. We've got the create caregiver record. And what we wanna do is we wanna go and get that record because we need to look up the unique ID of that record and set it against the newly created child record that we're gonna create in the next step. So important that you go and grab that record. Um, one of the questions that I had as I went through this, and I didn't actually test this, is if I actually have to get that, or if because it's already created here, if we need to, I went ahead and got it anyways, just to make sure that I would be able to set it up properly. Um, it would be worth playing around with a little bit and seeing if, if you really need that step in there. I believe you do, but I'm not 100% sure. And so I went ahead and added that in because it's pretty easy, right? Get contacts, grab the contact uh, unique ID from here, and then I've got a create youth record. And when thing, one thing that I want to point out in here is we've gone ahead and we're collecting the data, same as last time. We're creating a new record. We're setting the last name as the variable for last name, the first name for first name, and so on. And as we come down here, you'll see we've got the date of birth, which is just put in as a string. And so that uh, variable was set up as a string. We just pull the date in and then put the date in here and it works great. I'll show you in a minute. And the other thing that we wanted to do was contact type. And then all the way down here, we've got primary caregiver. And now this gave me some challenge. I was struggling a little bit with putting this, just the contact from that get parent record that I showed you, the get primary caregiver record. I was just setting it up to say, grab the unique ID of that contact. For whatever reason, that wasn't working. So I did a little search and came across this blog here, and I'll put this into the post for this video. Um, this was super, super helpful because it showed me that in order to get this done, now this is a different use case, but what this person was able to do is it was this right here. They put in the slash quotes slash. And so I went ahead and did the same thing, slash contacts, thinking that that maybe that's going to do the trick. And sure enough, it did. It worked like a charm as soon as we did that. So um, that's putting that in there before pulling in the unique ID. I was pulling the right value in. 
I just wasn't pulling, putting this ahead of it. As soon as I did that, gave it a test, worked like a charm. So speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and give this a try? So this is all set up and ready to go. It's been saved. I'll save it again, just to be sure. And once it's saved, I go ahead and go back. I'm gonna jump over to our form. So we've got a record coming in here. I've started to fill it out. I've got one child on this record. I'm gonna say next, it's gonna bring me to the youth name. So we'll call it Sammy Carlson. Date of birth we'll put in here as maybe the 14th of September. 2008, describing a random date. Oh, it didn't like that. I did it in the wrong format. So we'll go ahead and say 2008, September 14th. And so I'll submit that. Now that's gonna bring my form to a close because I only indicated one child. And so that's been submitted. And if we go into our Dataverse environment now, and I refresh this, that flow is running. You'll see 32 at the bottom. That should bump up to 33 in a second and then 34 once the child record's created. And so we'll just refresh it a couple of times. The flow's gonna take a minute to fire. There's 33, so the parent record's been created, and we should see it 34, there it is. So if we scroll through now, and we're going to look for our new friends, Tom Carlson. So I'll come down here, here's Tom right there. And so we've got Tom, the caregiver, We've got email in there, which is information. Now, you'll see a bunch of other fields, of course, you know, on our registration, a real life registration, we'd probably collect all that information. In order to keep these videos nice and short for you, we, we elected to keep this pretty straightforward and simple, but we could add all of these fields and then do the same thing. Identify variables, look for that question, grab the, the response and put it in the right field. The other thing that we did is we created a contact related to this and that's Sammy. And so you'll see Sammy is a youth and we've got Tom is the caregiver and the date of birth in here. And again, we miss things like gender and some other data, but for the sake of keeping it short. So what I would do next, if we were going to continue this on, we would then, I would put in a clause to, let me just jump back to our edit screen. I'm gonna go back to the bottom. I would put in a clause here, another control, and I would ask it if the answer to the question that was, I, that was posed on the form itself. How many children are you registering? If the answer was one, then we would terminate the flow because we know we're done, right? One question, we already had one child, that's it. If they said two, we'd go ahead and repeat the child record for the second child, basically the exact same thing here, just with the second child information. Go ahead and create that, put a clause in there. Is Did the answer to the how many children uh, was that answer two? If it was, terminate. If it wasn't, do the same thing for child three. Ask a termination clause. If it's still going, ask all the information for four. And then we would the flow would just end after that because that's the max number of children that you can register on our form. So that's kind of the logic. I didn't build all that in um, yet because uh, let's. I'm going to be honest, I got a little lazy. So I stopped a little early, but we would go ahead and build that out. And that would then allow us to collect up to four children and one parent um, worth of information on our form, push that into Dataverse, and away we go with our registration form. So super exciting stuff. It's a great way to end the year. I know we're all, it's hard to believe that the end of 2020 is here. I think many of us rejoice in that fact because it's been quite a year. But this has been a really neat experience with alongside Kylie and learning through all this stuff. And we're excited to tackle some stuff in the new year. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a break over the holidays and into the new year. And then we're going to dive back in with a couple of new uh, videos. And I hope you're willing to join us for those. And if you have any feedback or comments, please chime in on the posts or join us on social and uh, let us know what you think about this whole baseball project. It's been a lot of fun so far. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I wish you a wonderful holiday. Thanks, everybody. Take care.